the UK, one of the very first joint projects between environmental groups and the churches was with the Woodlands Trust and English Nature, or whatever it was called in those days, around churchyards. There are 15,000 churchyards in England. Um, and because that's where Gran is buried, you don't tend to plough it up or shoot animals on it or build a, a, you know, a high-rise block. It's a so sacred they've, land. They've, exactly. Because it's sacred, in a passive way, the church has protected it, simply because it was there. We turned that round and said, no, make this active. So there are 6,500 churchyards that are run as mini eco-projects by the parish, often with the parish school, with local communities, with the wildlife trusts. It's a fantastic partnership. But that idea that around sacred sites, because they're sacred, nature is kept in a state of reverence rather than utilisation, can be seen so strongly in that film with the Ethiopian churches, where there's 36,000 Ethiopian churches, and around almost all of them are the last remaining native forest. An Ethiopian Orthodox teaching a church, to be a church, should be enveloped by a forest. It should resemble the Garden of Eden. Hundred years ago, the highland was one big continuous forest. That big continuous forest has been eaten up by agriculture. It is a church who has protected this forest and who has safeguarded them from destruction. It's only because of the patronage and the blessing of the church this forest has survived. Church forests are always in my childhood memory. I used to go with my family for Sunday mass, for holidays. We have been always told that God gives mercy when you pray here. So the spiritual connectivity is so strong. The more I study them, the more I understand them, the more I see their problem their importance, their significance, and then I end up being hooked <laughs> with this forest, you know. لازم بيجي صفاتوش لي يغزيابير خيل على يغزيابير صقع على يغزيابير بركة على سيجي عندي تنزاف يتكلم سو بتوزع وزش كتر ردي مين تلا من اللي تعلق شلال تاتاي كده نوشم تاتاي كتولد دم النافرة كلا يس وات تاتاي كتولد دوشم يلو سوور تقولنا يبلا تشوان يبلا تشوان يا يالله كنا سوور تلقى كوسيا سوور تاتاي كيات أنا دنو كنتوانا ناتو بيتان تاتاني يتو كريستيانا تشين سوان كات تاجن راسون تاتا لتشك. The idea of making a wall to conserve the forest came from the church itself. If you see the rural church, they have a wall to protect the inner circle, which people think that's the most sacred place. So let's move that wall to the outside and include the forest as part of the church itself. 
who are making a barrier, not excluding humans, a barrier against cattle grazing so that regeneration and the health of the forest can be sustained. The church has been protecting the forest for centuries. But the forest in turn has been a guardian. It was a kind of mutual benefiting. The church itself were built from this forest. inner wall of the church has been painted and all those pictures, scriptures and murals were made out of tree, leaves, roots, barks and flowers 800, 700, even 1000 years ago. They are living by one another, they are embedded to one another. The church is within the forest, the forest is inside the church. In ecological term, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. There are millions of other creatures. There is so complicated, sophisticated interaction you cannot explain. Because of the coexistence, there is what we call emergent property. It's a new hybrid character. The mystery is to think beyond what we see. There is a problem always, a misperception that this forest would stay forever. We don't have any other backup. To safeguard the Ethiopian biodiversity, it is only the church fault. If we lose that, then that's all. 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 ወጣቱ ጎረምሳ ገበሬ ሲመጣ ወደ ጥግ እየመጣ ያርሳል እና ያኔ ድንበሩ ይጠፋል እና ይሄ ድንጋው አጥር ዋን ነው ጥቅሙ ከፍት እንዳይገባ ማለት ነው The biggest challenge is to open the eyes of the community to shop these forests are really disappearing They think always they are there forever The church forests are the blueprint. You can understand what kind of ecosystem, what kind of biodiversity, what kind of forest we had before. Everything is important and interlinked. So if you really care, we have to respect trees, the role of trees, and we have to learn to live with forests. We can bring back the landscape given that this church forest exists. That's my hope, that's my vision. I 
been and seen those forests in Ethiopia. It's one of the projects we've been most involved with and most proud of. But seeing that little bit of green in this, this desert, yeah. What does that say to you? Because RSPB owns a lot of land. You do a lot about protecting. Do you, do you treat that land as sacred? I don't think the word sacred would it be ever used to describe that land. It's, it's protected, it's, in, it's given a, an importance, it's stamped with SSSI. Um, but we'd never use the word sacred because we're not connected with the, the, the faith. But the people who go so, there, do they yeah, see it as something? Possibly, okay, possibly. is it special? Because what you've just described mm -hmm. in a sense is a catalogue, but you don't treat it as a catalogue and the people who go there don't treat it as a catalogue. So what word would you use, perhaps picked up from that Ethiopian example, about why these places are not just important, yeah. I think it's the value. They have a that. value. They have a value, um, whether it's to the individual because, um, I don't know, it's full of trees and, and that person loves trees, or whether it's got a value because it con contains a particularly um, endangered species. So, but we all have, we all give that a different value. Yeah, you use um, the word value so though. I mean, value in most people's mind is to do with worth, financial worth. Mm. Is it meaning? Because yeah. value is, it doesn't work for faith. Value as a phrase means money. And we have a more visceral relationship. Is there not a, I mean, so I'm impressed by that. I love the idea that the, this sacred site um, is is this little oasis around the church um, that's being protected. Be but it does have a value. But I don't know. Um... RSPB owns a lot of land, and it mm. provides these extraordinarily beautiful places where you can go and you can sit in a hide. You can watch the birds. Uh, you can have a nice cup of tea. You can, you know, it's a it's a place that people go for a sense of reconnection, mm. and that's what people go to religious places for, mm. is a reconnection. Now, I'm not going to use the word sacred for RSPB land, but what? But I don't think you've really, as an organisation, appreciated the depth of meaning and heart and soul that those places have. Is there a phrase or a way of expressing that that you would now use, having seen the Ethiopians? Is there something that can I don't link think us? as an organisation, but I think as to the individuals who go to those places, they value what those places give to them. So whether they have a special meaning, whether they, they're a place where you can see an unusual species, whether it's a protected habitat, I think it's more on an individual basis. Um, but I think it's almost for the individual to to go there and to appreciate what they get from that site, from they, they get from the wildlife, from they get what they get from being in that particular place. Mm -hmm. Is that? Or well, I'm just going to leave you hanging in the wind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think because we can't give the. It's not you don't give sites a label like that unless I'm wrong. Yes, you do. You give it an SSSRI. SSR, SSR yeah, I, know, I mean, come on, you labour the whole thing so to death. <laughs> I but not in a get drawn into quite a big philosophical sort of course, debate, yeah, uh, rather yeah. than reacting to the Ethiopia. Yeah, um, yeah, like yeah. What I wanted I to so. draw out. What was... did you want me to say? No. <laughs> I, I... Are you trying to get me to say? No. I just think so, yeah. that you, as an organisation, you don't appreciate that you are holding places of deep meaning. You manage them, and that's not the same thing. And we had okay. to help the churches and the mosques and the temples to stop just seeing this as land they managed and to see it as land that actually they were participants in a much, much bigger story, which was not just about humanity. Mm. That was the difference. And if you only see it in terms of management, I think you're missing nine-tenths of why it's important. If there was an ability to say, and we delight in the, the sense of reconnection and meaning this place gives for our place in nature, I think it's, it's the old thing of, one of our problems in managing land, and it was a, a problem with, with many of the faiths, was that we're apart from it. We own it, it's useful, but it's not us. What we've done with many of the faiths is to say, well, that's being apart from nature other than managing it. We're a part of nature. Therefore, this is actually almost part of our very body, our psyche, our being. It's that sense that these places are not just management projects. They are actually about a very different understanding of our place in nature. And I'm not asking RSPB to become yeah. a, a religious body, but I am asking it to perhaps note that it's, 
we don't manage this world, we are guests on it. That's a very different psychology from it's valuable to us because of species. No, it's valuable because actually it's of itself. It's just that sense that there is an integrity in nature that doesn't require us other than to not mess it. But I think, I think if we were only involved and only concerned in managing sites, we wouldn't um, embrace visitors, we wouldn't go mm, out there to mm. try and get people to enjoy the sites. I mean, I think what the organisation does so effectively is it does, it, it, it celebrates what we've got on those sites mm. and invites people to come in and experience that. And I think that's, the visitor experience is incredibly important. It's engaging people, inspiring people, getting them to get the most out of those, those sites. So I disagree in a, in a way, um, I get your point, but I just think that actually we do, it is all about getting people out there and connected with nature. You know, that's what the, the, the organisation is so passionate about. And you use the word celebrating so. there, yeah, which I absolutely. think that's, that's yeah. what I'm after, I suppose, okay. is, is this more than just a place where you have a coffee shop and people can go in and hide? Is it actually that there's something deeper that you actually are the protectors of to some yeah. extent? Is that, yeah. would that Abs be? Yes, uh, absolutely. We are the protectors of those sites. And, and it's important that we share them with as many people as possible. Mm. And, we, and going back to celebration, we celebrate the diversity on that site, that the wealth of what it can offer, um, spiritually, uh, environmentally, whatever. Um, and I think that's what the organisation does very well. But, um, but maybe we can learn lessons from the different faith organisations and their value in sacred sites as well. So, yeah. To what extent does a, an organisation like RSPB, which has huge management responsibilities, mm -hmm. see the management as the goal or whether the goal is actually to love, nurture and engage and be reconnected through these places? There is, a, mm. there is only one environmental organisation in, in, in the UK that uses an emotive word in its title and that's compassion in world farming. Mm. Yeah. We've kind of got rid of anything emotional and just made it with well, this is how we run forests and this is how we run wetlands and we run 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 mm. all i'm asking in a sense is how much space is there for for actually the poets to be as important as the as the site manager in explaining why these places exist because mm. i don't I think there's a movement in that direction i think mm -hmm. we've got a lot further to go but i think there is an acknowledgement of of how special these places are to the individual, not just what value they have to nature. Um, and I, I believe that that is something we will embrace more, maybe as a result of, of our celebration, mm. Celebration Earth. Um, so I think uh, we are very effective at managing sites, but we're very effective also at engaging people. And yeah. that's the most important thing, I think, is actually to, to, to get that connection, get people out and about, get people connected with nature. Um, and and uh, if, you, if they don't fall in love with it, they won't save it. So you need people to fall in love with that particular habitat, whether that it's a, you know, a particular species like a puffin or it's an earthworm. Fall in, lab, in love with that animal because mm. then you'll take measures, you'll, 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 you'll do something to save that particular species. Like Sangeeta says, it is about that love connection mm. and, and, and yeah. the, the depth of Maybe it. we're shying away from using the word love because it's too emotional, it's too passionate, we, we should be scientists looking at this, but I, I, I think you should fall in love with it, why not?